What's going on everyone? Daniel here. Welcome to my Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 4, Episode 3, Spoiler Review. Make sure you have seen the episode. It should take me about two minutes to recap it, then give you the pros, cons, and final score. Thanks so much for joining me. Starting off this week's episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., we have the beautiful and magnificent Yo-Yo at a party in Florida, and there is a total wide blackout in the Florida region because of Hurricane Matthew. Actually, that wasn't because of it. It's because of the Im imposing inhuman uprising. That's what's going on at the moment. So there's a blackout in Los Angeles as well. It's a blackout during the day, actually, so it's kind of like, oh, that's... Got like 10 hours left because it's like the morning time when the blackout happens, so we got, we got enough time. Uh, Robbie ends up saving his brother. This There are men with guns looking for inhumans where Yo-Yo is at, which I'm, I'm saying to myself, they go downstairs and I'm like, what are the coincidence of them about to walk out of the hotel and then a bunch of bad guys? Like, that's TV show for you, man. Like, the coincidence of that happening. Anyway, when Yo-Yo is, uh, well, excuse me, where Yo-Yo is at. Anyway, Melinda May is not doing good. She is going to have to die. That's what Dr. Radcliffe is saying in order for them to save her uh, if she's not treated soon. No, she, well, she's going to die if she's not treated soon, and the only way to save her is to kill her and to, like, bring her back to life uh, in order way to stop the whole ghostly fear that's about to go down. So Yo-Yo is in trouble, and Coulson... Mac and Fitz show up, and this is my favorite part of the whole episode. I'm not BSing you when I say the cinematography and the action and the choreography and the lighting, it is beautiful. Everything, the way that it was done, Coulson comes in and they have like these bars and everything, and it's like pew, pew, and like they're hitting the bad guys, and it, it's so badass. It, it's really a badass scene. So Radcliffe needs to kill May, uh, he does. Daisy's wrist is broken because she's been jerking it. Uh, so they kill May and the power goes out. So at that moment, you, I'm thinking to myself, they're not going to kill off May like this. But the power goes off and I'm like, my heart literally kind of like sinks to the ground, if that's even possible. And I was like, oh, shit. I didn't expect that to happen. I really didn't. I was like, I should have thought about that. So Daisy and Gabe are talking, and Gabe is Chris from Fear of the Walking Dead. He's a little shit. So the Watchdogs end up, uh, the Inhumans are actually, you know, the whole uprising was the Watchdogs plan to make the Inhumans look bad. So Fitz and Co. make some compasses because apparently they're five-year-olds, and they find the, the generator or the power source, and they stop it. Now Gabe ends up telling Daisy if he couldn't get his first blowy. I'm ki I'm kidding. I, need, I have two hands. That's all, man. I need help. Anyway, so what he's saying is, um, get out, Daisy. He's like, you know what? My brother only knows good people, so you should leave him alone. You should, like, get out of here. And I'm thinking to myself, like, you know what? She just saved your ass. Like, her and your brother just saved your ass, and you're telling her to leave. And the thing is, he's like... I think he's, like, he, he doesn't know she's inhuman. What were you doing? I saw you looking at her when she was, like, to the guy, and then he gets thrown. Like, how else did he get thrown? Like, are you stupid? Did you not? You were looking at her when that happened. I felt the earth shake. She just, did you not see the airwaves coming out of her? I don't understand whether that's the writing or whether that's just Gabe, the character, not knowing or whether he's just playing around. Anyway, he triggered me. So, S.H.I.E.L.D. is now public again, which is really cool. It's pretty lit. Hopefully they address that in The Avengers and they address that in Doctor Strange. So, again, May is saved. She's fine. She's good. She just had a little um, STD nap. And the senator, at the end, there's this whole like post credit scene where a senator is inhuman, I guess, or she's in this house, and it's pretty weird, and I don't care for it at all. So, now on to the pros and cops. Y'all already know it, my first pros for this episode is Coulson, Mac, and Fitz fighting the Watchdogs and saving Yo-Yo and her friends. Next would have to be the practical and CGI effects. Now, not much CG was done during this episode. Uh, it was pretty much more choreography, more practical, and then the only real CGI effects that we had was um, 
Daisy or Quake using her powers against that one guy and Gabe not looking. So for the most part, really, really great with the practical and CGI effects. I really love the idea of S.H.I.E.L.D. becoming public again. There are no more hiding in the shadows, no more worrying about Hydra and overtaking the S.H.I.E.L.D. That's all season two stuff. It was great for the time being, but now we are finally up and in the air. No more hiding. For the most part of Melinda May's story, it was pretty emotional. I was getting sad, and I didn't drop a tear because when when he ended up talking about the battery and he went to that AI and everything and he got the little the the charge, I was like, okay, she's not gonna die. But right when uh, Simmons ended up pumping and she was like, no May, no May. That's when I started getting emotional and I was like, they can't kill her like this. This ain't a way for them to kill off Melinda May like that. And I'm very, very, very happy they didn't kill her off. Now, Robbie belled Daisy the whole day. She must have smelled bad or something because when he, he went to go get medical stuff, he never came back till the morning. He probably was like, I ain't dealing with that girl again. She's probably dirty. No way. Uh-uh, I'm gonna go to my girl Chica's house down the road, you know what I'm saying? Just gotta, gotta lighten up a little bit. You know, Holmes, it's okay, I'm Hispanic. I always have to address this. I'm Hispanic. I look white. I'm Hispanic, trust me. That's why Rodriguez, Rodriguez, Rodriguez is the last name. Anyway, so, what was I talking about again? Oh yeah, the, the only good scenes really between Robbie and Daisy were when they were in the car in the beginning and they were talking and he was driving past all the dead cars that weren't working because the EMP went off. Uh, so that was really, like, I was, like, happy. I was like, Robbie and Daisy are quake. They're actually talking finally. They're, they're, they're you know, not angry at each other. They're kind of just getting to know each other, like, on a road trip, except they're driving around Los Angeles. Now, some stuff I didn't like about this episode. Gabe telling Daisy to leave. You know what, Gabe? Why don't you make her leave? You know? Why don't you make her leave, huh? You're just going to hurt her with words. That's something that I didn't like. I'm just saying, Daisy, like, I saved you. And, and, and like, I'll leave when Robbie comes back. But the thing is, why did Robbie take all night? Why did he take all night? I, d I don't understand that. Like, why? Now, like I said earlier, the action in this episode was great, of course. I cannot deny that. But, uh, you know, 100% honesty, that... After the action scene, they made the compasses. That was a little silly. I know it was his MacGyver moment and everything, but it was pretty silly. You know, it, it was... You think about it. No, no, don't think about it like as... No, it's really silly. It's a really silly, silly thing to do. And, and you know what I mean? Like, they don't have the power, I understand, you know, Coulson's hand, stuff like that. But then they show up, and I love it because Yo-Yo, Yo-Yo ends up doing the, she, she becomes the Flash, or in, in Marvel's case, she becomes Quicksilver. And I thought it was cheesy when she was like, you could see her doing, like, I thought that was kind of like Quicksilver-ish from X-Men side. I thought, I thought that was kind of like, um... Yeah, no, you're not going to do it as cool as Quicksilver did it. So, when that happened, I'm thinking to myself, why didn't Yo-Yo just do it at the party? Like, I know she did it one by one, but why didn't she just... She could have literally got everyone out of there. She literally could have got her friend out of there, her sister. She could have easily grabbed the guys and threw them in the water or threw them outside the building or took their guns and then threw them away. Like, why didn't she just do that? Why, why, why did she... I don't understand why she just... Just knock them all out. What are you doing? You have inhuman powers and no one will suspect what you did. It's not that hard. And last but not least, I didn't care about the ending with the senator or whatever. Whatever they're building up, I'm pretty sure it's fine. I'm pretty sure it's fabulous. But I, I, I didn't care for any of that. Like, I'm saying that's your cliffhanger. That's what you're leaving us with. That's not a cliffhanger. That's just a person, and she's against Inhumans or whatever, and then there's a cocoon there. Like, I don't... Whatever. I guess that's your cliffhanger. You could have ended it with something more big or more fun, but without further ado... I don't have much hate for this episode. I thought it was honestly great. And if it wasn't for those amazing action scenes, then I, I then I would have rated it like a B or a B minus. But I love, you know, Radcliffe and Simmons having more scenes together. Uh, Mac, Fitz, and Coulson. Definitely Coulson. Coulson actually kicking ass. 
That's the thing I love most about this episode with the action scene, is we finally get to see Coulson back in the field, not behind a desk. Not He's actually back in action. He's he's back to a season one state in his previous, back when he was in the Marvel films. That's what made Coulson so great. And Clark Gregg plays it so damn well. So I'm going to give Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 4, Episode 3, an A-. Minus. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed, make sure to smack the like button. You can comment down below to me what you guys thought about the episode. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think Robbie left the entire night because he didn't want to smell that stuff, whatever Daisy has on her? Maybe she has bad perfume. Maybe she has, I don't know, maybe she's just STDs. I don't understand. Maybe he could just sense it and he's like, that is not worth firing her up and taking her soul and burning her. That is not worth it. Uh, I'd rather live in hell than actually touch her again. That could be one of the factors. You can share this review with your friends and hit that subscribe button for more awesome Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. reviews weekly. Join the Big D Nation. Be part of this community that we're building. Be part of it or be deleted from history. Till next time, bye-bye.